back to the second unit podcast. We're here again. Jay Z, the kid's here early. A quick shout out to him as we jump into this shout stuff. Shout out to him, man. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it just to get it out of the way, man. If you guys are checking us out on YouTube, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. We're getting back into it with episode three. We are the second unit podcast. If you're joining us live on Twitch, we appreciate you guys hanging out. And uh, yeah, we're going to dive right into it. A lot of NBA stuff to talk about. Uh, since we have last been on we wanted to do a trade deadline special it didn't end up working out so we're here a week later a week removed with everything settled in this is my boy jp jay-z you guys are close jay-z jp we are uh, we're very close in names but um so we're gonna start i think by talking about the trade deadline just short we're kind of gonna go through the teams that we um that we think are like worth talking about um obviously a lot happened at the trade deadline so it's going to be kind of hard to cover all of it in a short amount of time so we're going to go through the stuff that we think is important and then um <clears throat> get into some other stuff we got some trivia questions we're going to talk about the current mvp we got a bunch of other stuff to go into and then i think our plan what time did you say the all star stuff starts, stuff starts at? at like eight so we got 50 minutes. We might go a little bit over that, but we're going to go into a watch party of the All-Star game of whatever's tonight. Yeah. Skills challenge, Skills three challenge point, dunk contest. Right. We're going to go into a watch party of that afterwards. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let's go right into it. This is a this is a Lakers podcast, I guess, at the end of the day, if you want to call it that. I'm let's, a LeBron fan, as let's, you can see. Let's, let's start by talking about them. I want to hear your initial thoughts on the trade bringing in do we need to recap we like do six need, of them right what well, do we do we really need to recap everything that we've done we started with the hachimura trade yeah. obviously and everybody's then, forgetting about that one i still not, that's honestly my favorite really. one i gotta keep it above not, 50. definitely I, not my favorite one I like my favorite one was westbrook tailing up out of there yeah but and a lot of people forgot about that already we're trying to well give me your thought give me your thoughts on everything uh westbrook thoughts i'm glad he's out of there um i think he's gonna do something decent well wherever he goes didn't fit for us i appreciate him raising his trade stock um and at the end of the day it was his time to get up out of there he didn't need to be there much longer um he did what he could for us and Uh, you know it wasn't great at all at at really any points but you know russ wish you all the best man we got some we got some heat for you. Yeah, tell me what you, tell me what you think about us bringing in. I need to remind you. D'Lo. Uh, no, nah, so we brought in what? D'Lo and Beasley mm-hmm. and Vanderbilt and some picks. Well, some and, picks went out. Yeah, picks but, went out. That's yeah. right. No, we brought back what? Two picks for... That was in the Kendrick Bunn trade, though, I think. Uh, yeah, those were two seconds. Yeah. Uh, that that was just to get off of them. Yeah, those well, no, that, was, that brought in Hachimura. I think we gave up second round picks in that. I think it was Kendrick Nunn two seconds. Sure, for Hachi I yeah. don't know. We we ended up with some. I think we did end up with some kind of pick. At the end of the day, well, I really I don't remember who it was. I I want. I'd rather focus on the team aspect yeah. and how much better we look. I mean, our shooting has improved tremendously. Well, I mean, not even that. Just the starting lineup that we rolled out the other night, where it was finally like, all right. We're going all in on this trade. We started all three of the guys that we traded for. I had to. Like, I mean, we didn't have to, but we did. And it, because he didn't do it the game before, and everybody was kind of advocating for it and hoping that, I mean, D'Lo was obviously going to start, but I, I was I was questionable about Malik Beasley. Jared Vanderbilt obviously needed to start, I think, him next to AD. I know AD doesn't want to play the five, but he, he's kind of accepted he's the fact that yeah. he has to. He's so he does that. Like he used to, so Ashley, he used how we to. doing? Welcome. Five um... I don't know, man. It's uh, I'm I'm just really glad that he embraced the fact that like we made those moves and it was time to like go all in on it. And we're we've been really good since since inserting those guys in the lineup. This was the second game yeah. that he did it, and we looked really really good. Like it's it's so. I didn't catch that game tragically enough. Yeah, how did what? you miss that? Because like this is the most optimistic <laughs> I've been as a Lakers fan about like an upcoming season mm-hmm. since I don't know I didn't think we were going to win in 2020 like so year? probably the year yeah yeah don't think about this year but no, we won in a no, championship this I'm year I'm not thinking about this year <laughs> this year is more than likely over 
I mean, next but year is a very optimistic because we still got to resign. Yeah, our but guys. we 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 gave ourselves a chance. We have options. Like we have we have things that we can do. We have guys we can move around. We have contracts we can move around. Sure. Like we have flexibility in terms of the things that we can do around LeBron's extension and around AD still being here. It's the most flexibility <laughs> in terms of draft capital and contracts that we've had in the last even even during the bubble i mean we we just were faded and gave away every every piece of that championship team yeah. for some reason now we're kind of realizing that we kind of got to kind of like rekindle and um put back like a three and d guys around lebron <coughs> and not try to go all in on like another star i kind of i should have started off by saying this props to rob plinka man the dude put together some heat at the end when the cars were stacked against him. I didn't think he was honestly going to make the moves that he did. And I think a lot of people were giving him a lot of hate going into this trade deadline because mm-hmm. of a lot of it was right. A lot of it was right. Yeah. So. But a lot of it wasn't just Rob Lincoln. Like if Russ, yeah. uh, Russ was brought Russ in was because bad. Russ was eight, bad. Eighty well, yeah. him. So. Yeah, yeah. I always said that too. Like Rob Plinka did get a lot of heat for that. Yeah. There's no way he does that trade without LeBron and AD no, signing no off way. on it. And like, like the Buddy Hill yeah. Miles Turner trade was ready to go through, and we got Russ. But Russ is gone. We got the new guys. I'm honestly more happy with the guys that we have now than Buddy Hill or Miles Turner. I don't know if I agree with that because we would have had a full season with them. Yes. So it would have been a lot different. We probably wouldn't be a 13 seed. <laughs> and we might have a better shot in terms of like playoff seeding to have an actual chance at competing for a championship. When you have LeBron James and Anthony Davis on your roster, there's no reason you shouldn't be competing for a championship. Nah. Like, especially, I mean, AD has been in and out, but. um. Oh, mom's in the chat. Hi, mom. Shout out to mom. Shout out to mom. Oh, my gosh. Love you, mom. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> But, um, God, where even was I? That kind of threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm just, I'm just excited because, like I said, there's, it's, it's a good time to be a Lakers fan. I know you don't really care about the Lakers outside of yeah, LeBron. Outside but, of LeBron, you know, I, um, I'm not really keen on the Lakers future, but we'll see. We only had to give up one of those picks. We yeah. look how long we went that on the Lakers. The w, yeah. See, we need to go through these next couple teams really quickly because we just spent a lot of time talking about the Lakers. The next team I want to talk about is the Suns. Do you think that they're the favorite okay. in the West now? First of all, with KD. I was up at 2 o'clock in the morning when that trade went through. And when I tell you, I my stomach hit the floor. I told you how I figured it out. <laughs> no, I, I texted you immediately. KD to the, to the Suns. Like, I, like, I don't really think they're the favorite. No. I think Chris Paul is who do you declining. Like, who do you like better than them? You know who I like better than them. I'm sticking with it. The um, Lakers. The Lakers, LeBron and AD Who in the you, playoffs. All right, outside They're, of the Lakers, do you see anybody better than the Suns? In the <laughs> West, no, yes. no. Okay. Uh, in the East, I still think the Suns. I probably agree. Or Philly right now is playing better than the Suns. Mm, we're you're getting a very key team that's on a very Bucks, big win streak uh, right yeah. now. Yeah. Live streaming, Hi. live recording, podcasting, streaming. Thank you. Oh, I'm against. What? Okay, text me or something. I'm here. I'm ready. Text me or something. Just text. Just text me or something, please. I said it like five times. He just kept walking in. He's trying to be a guest. He's trying to be in this. But nah, I just uh, the the Suns they they got something brewing over there. They need to make some moves as far as the buyout market and bringing in some roster. They did. They brought in Terrence Ross. Oh, they did. They yeah. that went through. I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ron that, that's that's great. That brings in shooting for sure. It's another guy. They, yes. need, they need guys. They had. Yeah, they, they need had, guys. They had sure. probably like eight guys that you're comfortable <laughs> playing. I don't know if I could name them off the top of my head. I saw the starting. I know. Five, um, Toy Craig, Toy Craig, Landry Shamit, okay, uh, Josh Okogi. Then who who would be the other one? See, I don't even know after that because obviously you got the big four. And then those are the only three I can That's name really after that. But there's other there's other guys that they'll be okay. Um, I want, we can touch on the Nets really quick. I, I I don't mind I don't mind the way that they're that they're doing this. They probably like I think realistically the Nets fleece the Suns for. A while. I think they did. I was gonna say that for sure. I think well, I was gonna say the Suns fleece the Nets. I think you can get a lot more for KD in terms of like what they got two first round picks. Was it or was it three? It was probably it was three. three. I think it was, yeah, three. it was three. But like 
in terms of like you can get more than that you can get young players they got solid guys but they didn't get like a young star which is something you probably deserve when you're trading for like an mvp candidate because the mvp candidates do not get traded during the season it's never uh-huh. happened but Never KD happened. wanted out, and he wanted they wanted to do right. And so that's what I was gonna say. So. They they did want to do right by KD. They did not care about Kyrie. They right. wanted, but like for the, it, it's almost like it's confusing because with the Kyrie trade, they traded for guys where it was like, okay, you're trading for Dorian Finney-Smith and you're trading for Spencer Dinwiddie, mm-hmm. who are two really solid guys that can play right now, who like would fit next to KD, who would be really good next to KD. So mm-hmm. it's like. It's almost like you're not trading for the future. You're trying to trade for guys that would right help KD yeah. and make sure. him want to stay. And then you turn around and trade KD two days later. So it made the Kyrie trade look kind of silly, in my opinion. And then I think you could have gotten more for KD. Either way, with all that being said, I still think the Nets are in an okay position. Like, you, you've got, you've got a solid NBA team. You're obviously mm-hmm. going to make the playoffs because you're already the 3-4 seed four six, yeah. with Kyrie and KD getting you there. So I'm they're they're interested in keeping an eye on Mikael Bridges had like forty five the other 45 night. Career high so up to him. there a lot of guys are gonna get opportunities that haven't gotten opportunities on their other team who've been role players, kinda like the Jazz. Like kind of like you you might see somebody like like you had Laurie Markin this year come out of nowhere and now he's an all star starter. So I, I could really see that for a guy like Mikael Bridges or Spencer Dinwiddie, like just getting an opportunity to flourish. Um Proto to the Raptors. We don't really need to touch on that yeah, too really much. I thought that was kind of weird to me because of the Raptors were in all these talks about they were gonna move one basically OG trading like Siakam. trading like, trading one of their pieces and then they just Freddy and just then they just give up something up, instead like, for Proto. So I don't know. We'll yeah, that one was a little confusing. The Warriors him. officially gave up on James Wiseman. They traded Gary Payton or for Gary Payton when they had the rights to Sadiq Bay and they decided to let Sadiq Bay go to Atlanta after Atlanta did that trade to save some money and they brought in Gary Payton and then all that stuff happened where he failed the physical and apparently Portland was making him play through an injury so all that was crazy um you know if James Wiseman does go to Detroit and start balling out it's gonna his first game was looking all right it's gonna look weird it's gonna look weird on the Warriors part because you did trade for a guy that was on your team last year and you let walk um, could have resigned, but he he got a contract somewhere, so they weren't gonna like try to deprive him of his money. They were gonna let him get his money. But um, I'm I'm intrigued by the Warriors. Obviously, Steph's hurt, but when all those guys are healthy and on the floor together, you know that they can be a championship contender. Last team the Warriors in? Right. They are. I don't know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the Warriors are at and talk about the Clippers and the moves that they made while I do that. Uh, moving. Canard to... I like that trade. I did want to bring that up. Memphis Warriors Warriors. are the 9 seed. They're a half game back of the 7 seed. And a game back of the 6 seed. Two games back of the 5 seed. So they're right there. Like, the NBA is so set up weird right now. Yeah, I mean, everybody's like, really you're close. You're struggling for 500. Like, except for San Antonio and Houston. But, yeah, the Lakers are slowly falling, man. Yeah. They lost a couple of really... Big the last games. three, the, the two after the trade deadline, and they lost to it was Minnesota yeah. and lost to OKC the night LeBron yeah, broke yeah. the record. I think they lost to Portland too. Yeah, before the three straight before and then the deadline. The Jeez, not a bad loss is there, but yeah, the Clippers what obviously the got rid of John Wall. They brought in Eric yeah, Gordon, John got rid of Luke Kennard, right. uh, brought in Mason Plumley, who I means cool. Like they made cool moves. Nothing yeah. like Bones Highland. Bones Highland oh, could play an interesting role for them, but I'm not too intrigued. That's just interesting to me that Denver would just give him up. Like, I understand he wanted out and he, that situation wasn't right for them, but, like, he's a young, up-and-coming type of yeah, guy, was, in my there opinion. There was just like, He was he one of the guys that feels like he should be playing a bigger role. And, and I don't disagree with him. Like, mm-hmm. that team, they could. I feel like they could have built, built something, him a better role in the second unit somewhere like starting no but Denver as a playoff team is not consistent enough just to be giving up guys that could come off the bench and do we want to buckets. talk about Denver as a playoff team if we're going to talk about these these standings because I have you know I have my thoughts on Denver as a playoff team uh, yeah go ahead defensive gripes well I mean you you think the Lakers are going to win the championship yeah, so I don't really know not. what to say to you, to you about that Oh, um, you don't see it, man. Anything is possible. The cards will fall in our it. favor. I don't see it at all. Dude, we got that I mean, guy. We can, we can talk. I mean, what do you think about Denver in the playoffs? 
um, in recent past, they are inconsistent. They have they they haven't really been healthy though. You gotta give them that. Yeah, I give them that. Like, but Jokic is a liability on defense in a seven game which is, series. Which is the point he's gonna give you made. his triple double, obviously, and go out there and hoop on offense. But yeah, it's just a quick point just... that I want to make on Jokic, and it's the reason that I think that they're probably gonna continue to struggle unless they can find really like another big that they can put next to him that mm-hmm. can play in that in those pick and rolls. But when you have Jokic on the floor, he's not a bad defender. Like I'd say he's probably a little bit like a little bit below average for his position. Yeah. Like not by much. He, he a lot of nights he's an average or above average defender, but he's not quick. And so when you have to switch, it's a very guard dominant league. Like and I won't say especially in the West because it's just guard dominant everywhere. everywhere. But there's a lot of good guards in the West, and when you run into a team like the Warriors or the Blazers who have Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, even the Thunder who are gonna have Shea, Luca on the Mavs, like mm. you, these guys are, are very perimeter centric players. And when you put Jokic in a high screen and roll, he has to play drop coverage, which means he's he's gonna be below the three point line basically. Mm. And because if he comes above the three-point line and they try to trap, he's either going to get... If you switch, he's obviously going to get beat. If you trap, you're at a numbers disadvantage. So he, it's really hard to for him to play in a seven-game series. Like, he's, he's a much better player in the regular season, which kind of okay. sucks to say. Because, like, I'm, I'm rooting for him, bro. He's an all-time great. He's the, we're going to talk about the MVP in a second. But he's, he's on pace to win it. Third straight MVP, Third straight. Uh, only ever done by Larry Bird and what was he, Wilt, Wilt Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Like so, this is elite company that we're talking about putting this guy in. Larry Bird's a three-time champ. Wilt won however many he won. He was on those, all those teams that lost, I think, for the Lakers. But like, this is elite, elite company. We're talking about Wilt Chamberlain, the guy that averaged like fifty and thirty for a season, mm-hmm. and Larry Bird. Like, this is this is the company that we're putting him in, and he he hasn't done anything in the playoffs yet. So. I think it's going to be important for him to. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but still, like you want to. I think if they like somebody said it on that podcast earlier, if you if they bow out in the first or second round, that's a huge, huge disappointment. Especially if he wins a third straight. Yeah, if he wins a third straight, definitely. It would be a huge disappointment. All right, so you want to dive into this trivia, these trivia that I have for you yeah. before we do the MVP ladders and talk about it. <laughs> I don't think they're. I don't think they're too hard. I'll do. Um, NBA trivia, but we'll see. I'm a movie watcher and TV uh, shows. I don't got. Okay, maybe the second one will be hard. We'll I'll give you some hints. I'll give you some hints. I'll right, see if you see. can get it. The first one is, which two players are tied for most All Star selections of all time? Um, so think. I'm gonna think, say Kobe and MJ. No. Kobe and, and Bron. Let me, let me give you a hint. Bron is right. I was gonna say think longevity yeah. and like, who else was really good for a long time. If I tell you this, it would give it away. But Bill? No. Uh-huh. No. Another guy scored a lot of points. Will? No. Nope. <laughs> it's been all this stuff, all this stuff about this guy when LeBron was breaking the record. That kind of gives it away. That's, that's what I said. What was it? Bill Russell? No. Kareem. Kareem. Oh, my God. Kareem. So I'm going to embarrass myself. Kareem. So LeBron and Kareem have the two most... Yeah. Uh, all-star selections at all time. Okay, what this one, this one gives me... 19, I mean, yeah, 19 this year. And how many yeah. would have Kareem had? Kareem would have the 19, same, yeah. yeah, I think. Or maybe LeBron's passing this year. No, nah, it would have been 19 because he's in year 20. Well, yeah, so. I guess it counts as a selection. Yeah. Either way. All right. Which player was taken third after Kevin Durant in the 2007 draft? I don't know. I'm going to tell you... I was, I, I was going to say, I'll give you the team or I'll give you the position. But I'll give you team. both. It was the Hawks. And he was good for the Hawks for a little while. Josh Smith? No, it was a big guy, though. Joe Johnson? No. Think bigger. He's still in the league. Still kicking. League. Still kicking. Okay, wait. Get, Hawks. I'm going to give myself three guesses, so I got two so far. Hawks center Hawks there for a long center. time. We grew up on him, mm. low key. I didn't watch the Hawks really, like other than the games that we were going to, like back in the feeder days. He like, was there. He was there. He was ah, there. I gotta he remember there. now. Hold on. He was there. He was oh, there. Oh man, he's still in the league. Yeah. If I tell How? you, if I tell you the team, it'll give it away because you'll know. I'll tell you that they're in the East and they are a championship contender. 
Oh, uh, Al Horford. Yes. Correct. Correct. I forgot he played for Atlanta. Yeah. That's crazy. But now that you say it, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah he definitely. Yeah, I remember seeing. I remember seeing. Okay, then this one, this one's the last one. I don't think you're gonna be able to get this one because it's the obvious answer is not correct. And once you don't get the obvious answer, you're not gonna know. Okay. Which team drafted Kawhi Leonard? So the, if it's not the obvious answer, it's not the Spurs. Yeah. Um, Do you have any idea? I, I did. This was the one where I was like, he's probably gonna have no clue. So Kawhi has played for the. Spurs. I took all these off like a off like a TikTok that like somebody asked some guy on the street. And I, I did know this one. The guy on the street did not get this one. He got the other two after the hints, but he did not get this one. It was. I'll give you a hint. It was an Eastern Conference team. Eastern Conference team. Oh, I low key feel like I've seen this now. Cause like, him, I've seen like weird memes of him. Like, yeah, did he play? He didn't play there long though. Right? He never played there. He never he played there. Okay, 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 okay. He never played there. All right. Um, I'm gonna give myself three guesses. Let's go. Eastern Conference team. Detroit. No, no, not close. Um, same division, but you know the divisions. Some more loser. I'll tell you the rest of the division. Well, oh, fuck, do no. I know the rest of the division? I do know the rest of the division. Milwaukee, Cleveland, Indiana, and oh fuck, I was just gonna say. Well, those are three, and he's on one of those teams. It was one of those teams. I'm gonna say Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And I'd say I'll give you, uh, I'll give it, I'll, I'll give it to you because yeah. you're gonna get it off of this. Yeah. His current teammate was drafted there, and they were gonna be teammates. Oh, had, Indiana, yeah. Then. yeah. And that so him and Paul crazy. George yeah, were gonna they be, were teammates, be teammates. Had, okay, had they never been. Dang, so there was a story behind it. I didn't know there was yeah. a story behind it. Yeah. Well, not really. I don't think. Did so, they, they know each other like that back then? I don't think so. No. I don't think that was the reason they wanted to be teammates. Now, but yeah, I don't know. Um, that's, that's cool. That's yeah. Cool. So I was thinking, yeah, bring some for me next yeah, podcast, and we'll yeah. just do that like every week. That's kind of fun. Like, looking at TikTok. And you can you can hit me with some because you know I can. Yeah, you know way yeah, more. Than I, can, I can probably answer. I'll, be, I'll hit you with some hard ones. I ain't gonna get bring it easy. Mm -hmm. You can bring it easy for me. I'm ready. So I don't look too stupid. Out here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> do we want to talk? I had the MVP ladder written down. Did you have anything else that you written down that you want to talk about? Uh. Shout out to everybody hanging out with yeah, us live. Out, the W, the real ones. Oh, yeah. I want to bring up Paul George saying he wants Russell Westbrook to win a ring. <laughs> how do you feel about them courting Russell Westbrook to the Clippers? I mean, do you know how I feel about that? <laughs> if you want to give your thoughts, like uh, your honest opinion. Like I said, I feel like Russell's going to make it any team better but the Lakers, and I would really hate to see him make the Clippers better. I very much disagree. <laughs> you I would mean, hate to see him make the Clippers? No, 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 not even that. Like, okay. I don't even want to see Russ fail as a Russ hater anymore. He's off the Lakers. I would yeah. love to see him do well. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's going to happen. Like, he, no. bro. Oh, he was on the up and coming out. Like, he was going to win six men of the year. No, nah, man, there's just he can't shoot bro he he's a liability on the court he's he's unattentive on defense he falls asleep all the time like he misses he misses layups he's sporadic turnovers like the I defense do, would be i don't be i don't think covered. i don't think he can help a team i really don't i really don't i think he's gonna get a chance absolutely a chance Man, but I like I personally don't think he can help a team and that's not even me as like a russ hater like yeah. i've definitely I've been labeled a Russ hater over the years at this point, which I'll, you, I'll take on the chin. <laughs> I'll take it on the chin, bro. I just don't like guys. Like, one, I, I'm not I'm not a fan of his game in the first place. Like, I don't like guys that are just kind of rely on their athleticism over their skill. He's mm -hmm. never been a good shooter, never really had good touch. I thought he used to chase stats when he was trying to average those triple doubles. He was on a terrible team, and there was clear evidence where you would watch him, like, take rebounds out of his teammates' hands and – Steven Adams admitted that he could have averaged 15 rebounds if it weren't for him giving up, like, Easily. six or seven a game to let Russ get his triple-doubles. Like, so, and it never never even turned into winning. It never even turned into winning basketball. Like, they Maybe were they were never good. They Once, and, like, they, yeah, they had KD <laughs> and Harden. Like, in the year, the years, the last year that him and KD were together, they blew a 3-1 lead in the Western Conference yeah. Finals. Like, it just never his 
play is never his play style is never equated to winning and i'm just not a fan of those type of guys he's one of those guys chris paul is another one i'm a guy who like as a basketball player and as my kind of play style, I wouldn't be a fan of Chris Paul. I like the skill. I'm a fan of the little pump fakes. I'm a fan of the mid-range game. I like his work in the pick and roll. He's one of the masters of the pick and roll. One of the best to ever do it. I'm not a fan. Like I don't like guys that bitch and moan and complain all the time. He's a little bitch to me. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him. And he, his yeah, play is never equated to winning. I'll give you that he's gotten hurt in critical moments and like had to had to be out and you can't really control this and that. Even Harden in that series against the Warriors, if they if he's healthy, they win that. That's I'm I disagree with that. I've always no. disagreed with that, but still, bro, it never equated to winning. There's no reason that that Clippers team shouldn't have broken through one year. There's no and, reason like, that that Suns got into the finals. Beat the Bucks that year, they should have won that year. I, I mean, had the Suns would be the Bucks. Oh, I did two years ago. I didn't. They did go up two zero though. Yeah, man, they, they sure did go up two zero with CP three and D book. Sure that's do. why I feel like it's more so on D book and KD now that that team has been assembled. CP3 is on the decline, and Aiden doesn't want to be there anyway. So I don't consider that. Anymore. He wants to be there now. <laughs> I, I think he wants to be there even less. You know, he brought nah, you brought in bro, KD they could like win just a championship. They could definitely win a championship. They can, no definitely could win a championship, hundred percent. But the KD recipe really, I don't. Him running a team isn't really known for winning championships. We've seen it with the Nets. I mean, he went I to mean the there was a Seattle lot. There was a lot that he Golden couldn't State, control Golden with the State, Nets. Um, okay, OKC, yeah. yeah. I, just, I don't know, man. Katie, Katie's so perennial. Like, there's a reason that all these teams started making all these moves as soon as that KD trade happened yeah. because they're they're scared of him. Like, you're very scared of what KD he can back do. In the West is scary. Yeah, so For like sure. you, he wherever he goes, you got to understand that that team is going to be a threat to win a title. I know where all this shit stemmed from, right? John yeah. Morant saying, "I'm fine in the West." I don't see him coming nah, back. Nah, nah, nah. All this is stemming from Kyrie not getting along with the Nets and wanting out. As soon as Kyrie yeah, as soon as that was inevitable. He was like, I feel like they would have traded him. As soon as they team. traded Kyrie, they looked at they looked. Katie looked at the roster. They would have like, traded you know, Kyrie to the Shanghai Knights. Yeah, they got something back for it. Man, yeah. Right. But trade deadline was crazy. It was a uh, probably my favorite trade deadline in the last oh, like five years. Best that trade deadline watching. I've ever witnessed. Yeah, that's for sure. And it came out of nowhere. I feel like a lot of people were had the intention that it wasn't going to be much after like a week of not seeing anything yeah there was there was a lot of talk <laughs> like after the Rui like trade was it was happen. like nothing and I was like okay like I'm cool with Rui but we got to do something here yeah so it was it was cool to see a lot of teams do things um and if you weren't a team that did anything and just stayed where you're at other than the Kings I think you missed out like you should have done something mm, there are, there aren't too many teams that didn't make a move that's what i'm saying like if you didn't make a move and do something like the raptors they should have moved they traded for purtle still it's not enough you could have traded og or uh, but like, and got but something. like you're getting you're not really getting you're getting future assets back for those guys you're not getting win now assets yeah, no, they, they're not a everybody thought everybody thought sell. they were going to be selling and they ended up buying that was the whole point yeah. i i just feel like if they're Want to think about their future? They should have made some moves right now. Um, some of the like, I mean, that's it, a, they're, they're, they're trying to win now, I guess. Like, they ain't winning shit out in the east. Wait, what? I mean, I agree, <laughs> that's why it doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they with the move that they made, they should have made some better moves. Uh, I don't know if I agree they were, with that a, they were a loser because, like, whatever you're gonna get for OG, you're gonna you can get that this offseason. Like, so you can you can play this out and see how it goes this year. Like they made the win now move for Purtle. Maybe they feel like they can make some noise. Like you never, it's hard. It's hard. And Masai Ujiri, the owner of the Raptors, has always been one to sit on his assets. He's yeah, never been uh, one to make moves. Those are his like, guys. He's not gonna like just the give Kawhi up the trade was like insane to everybody in Toronto yeah. because he traded away DeRozan, and you, you, they just don't make moves like that ever. So got him a championship, so I can't be mad at him. Exactly. So, but like, does he feel like he could do that again? Like, what are the odds you trade for somebody like that and then it happens again? If Who's KD gonna, was available for OG you would have had to give up Siakam. too much though. You would have had to give up too much. Uh, and I think that's why he did it at the time, because at the time 
what did they, what did they trade? They traded DeRozan, and I I don't even remember what else. Like it wasn't a lot of draft capital. It it, it, Kawhi was in a weird situation. He was, he yeah, was they wanted out. I mean, he asked out. He was and available and to get. Did they even ask out? They just didn't want him there no more, right? Like, I don't even really remember. I just remember it, was, it was very quick. Was not it, was, it all happened very quick. But either way, yeah. We've gone off topic a bit. Was that all you wanted to bring up for now? Because the only thing, the other thing I have is we can talk about the MVP ladder. I don't really yeah. have any issues with it, honestly. I mean, what is it like? in terms of the top five players. No, so, I feel like Yoke is kind of a lock. I don't if he keeps continuing to play the way right he is. Now too. So that's current. The current MVP ladder from five to one is Luca at five, Embiid, Tatum, Giannis, and then Jokic at one. No that is problem. the current um, latest straw poll that. Tim Bontemps does every Love year. Love Luca. I feel like he could. I mean, but it's such it's such an insane year because like on any, I feel like we're starting to say this more often, like any other given year, and I guess because we're comparing it to years of the past when when guys just weren't exploding offensively and dropping fifty a night, things like that. Yeah, but like like sense. any of these top five guys could win MVP on like another year. You yeah, hundred percent. Easily. And so it's so crazy that we have to have this debate, and it's crazy that you feel like Jokic is a lock. I do out of all of it, and like I kind of do too, just because of how much better. And I think the only reason that we were giving Jokic the lock is because the team is so much better exactly. than it's been yeah. in the years past. And so he's always better. been this elite. The advanced stats have always been so heavily in his favor, but before his the teams were three seed, five seed, like. Mm-hmm. It, he was never they were never the far and away the best team in the west and he, like he was never far and away the best player on the best team he was always so good that he was still able to win the award but now he's the best player on the best team and he's averaging a triple double so it's kind of it's, it's it's crazy to think about yeah and uh watch getting to watch Jokic live i learned how to appreciate his game and how methodical this man is like you don't realize this man mm-hmm. goes and gets a triple double yep. and you don't even you realize. look at it in the stat sheet after yep. like they beat the hawks and i couldn't tell you half of the assists that, that man we got but he had 10 of them you <laughs> look up in the third quarter he's got 21 11 and 7 and you're like what when, when did that happen i haven't like, even seen him shoot a shot <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> so no i if he keeps playing like this and the Nuggets are the top seed in the West. I don't see him losing the MVP. So, do we think LeBron has a reason to be upset in years past? Yes. Because there was. I feel there, like as a LeBron fan, I have a reason to be pissed there wasn't, off. There definitely wasn't. You got to admit there was. Well, I guess you don't really. You probably wouldn't really know, but there definitely wasn't as much emphasis on like advanced statistics as there is nowadays. So, like the reason, the huge, huge reason that Jokic won the last two years was because of advanced stats mm-hmm. and the way that like the media people look at these advanced stats now and how they feel like they have an effect on the game. Mm-hmm. Like if if they were looking at that stuff back then. I mean, who knows? Like, will LeBron have been far and away the leader in advanced stats? Like, it's kind of hard to say. You don't really know. They were definitely the best teams. I mean, the years that he won MVP, I'm sure he was. Uh, I'd have to go back and look and see what years that he lost. Like, that he was second. Who really won? Like, if they... How much better they were playing. Thing, it goes the year every year KD I see LeBron won. play, he'd been the best player on the court and the best player in the league. I still think he's the best player right now. Obviously, I don't think he won MVP right now because the Lakers suck. But put the Lakers at the one seed. He went. He went back to back in twelve and thirteen, right? MVP. Mm-hmm. Is that right? I think so. That was. No, I really don't know. I really don't know. But either way, I. I mean, I can see where where some LeBron fans would be upset and feel like he probably should have won three in a row at some point in his career if Jokic is doing it and plus Jokic still has to prove himself in the playoffs it's kind of what we were talking about earlier if you're going to let Jokic be in the same breath of air as Larry Bird and Wilt Chamberlain is the only guys to ever win three straight MVPs you have to show up in the playoffs you have to our our guys are going to look at you differently if you win three MVPs in a row you're you're obviously in rare company and I give you your but if you don't, that's what I'm saying. If you don't, if you don't show up in the playoffs, guys are gonna look at you differently in terms of how they rank you with the all-time greats. It's a regular season award, though. It's not a playoff award. But, but like you rank, you you count, you rank these guys. You that's why there's a Finals MVP. 
Yeah, but you put you put this stuff on their resume. Like you're not gonna take away LeBron's MVPs in terms of his all time greatness. Yeah, but we don't can say it's consider a regular LeBron's season award. MVPs, you know what I mean? Like, as far as we when we talk about goat conversation, it's championships. How many championships do you have? So, okay, I'm glad you admit that. I, I've, I've <laughs> always admitted it, but I don't I think it's the right that. argument. That's not it's not fair in my opinion because like I always say, there's plenty of guys that have more rings than. Well, not plenty of guys that have more rings than MJ, but there's guys that have more rings than MJ. And <laughs> there's guys that sat on the bench of plenty of rosters and racked up six rings, and it's like, hey, man, like, yeah, are but they like, in the GOAT conversation? Fuck no. No, but nobody's <laughs> sitting here saying Bill Russell's the GOAT because he has 11 rings. Still, I bet like somebody saying, is. I yeah, bet I somebody bet they are. I bet 100%. Somebody. I bet somebody is. <laughs> Hundred percent. All right. Do we want to do we want to do the Steph Curry thing? I just remembered that. Do we want to say who we think Steph Curry would replace? Because I I did some deep thinking about oh, this earlier, so I can tell you. Yeah, um, I can tell you my thoughts on it if you want to hear my thoughts. We got fifteen minutes until the thing starts, so we can so talk about this like, for like, like five, yeah, and then do the All Star preview after that. For sure. Um, I have an undisputed top seven of all time. In my opinion, and I guess we'll make it top eight now because I have undisputed Steph in my on my list. Did you write it down or something? Yeah, I mean I have my top ten or top twenty. All right, tell me tell me yours first because I'm intrigued to hear yours first. My top seven is pretty undisputed for me. I'm gonna go in order as well. Um, if anybody in here's intrigued to hear my top ten ever. All right, my top ten. You know what I mean? Bron, MJ, Shaq, Kareem, Magic, Kobe, Bird. Curry, Wilt, Tim Duncan. Let me see. Shaq at three is unbelievable. He's the GOAT, man. He's the best center of all time. Okay. I know what name that you're missing that's on my list. Probably Bill Russell. Bill Russell. Yeah. So is that who you knock out for yeah. Curry? Yeah. Okay. He is not one of the guys that I would consider. He Bill Russell is in my undisputed top like, seven. I bet my, you I could guess who you're going to knock out, but go ahead. Well, I'll tell you the three names that I'm considering knocking okay. out. So my undisputed top seven ever is MJ, LeBron, Kobe, Kareem, Magic, Tim Duncan, and Bill Russell. And so we're going to add Steph Curry at eight because I think he falls in right there. Okay. I think you can argue him with Bill Russell as well. You can, like, I might put Steph at seven, but those are probably my undisputed eight guys. Okay. So the other three names that I have after that to fill out the list would be Shaquille O'Neal, Larry Bird and Will Chamberlain. Like, was Larry Bird on your list? Yeah. Okay. Well, I had Larry at seven. Okay. So those are the three guys. I am between. Like, it's hard. It's so hard to knock Wilt out of the top ten. I'm not knocking Wilt out of the top. Exactly, <laughs> because, <laughs> because the numbers just back no, it yeah, up so much, much yeah. and you'll never ever see somebody do the things that he did. No, nah, we ain't. Put up not everybody numbers. saw them numbers. Well, either. that you know what I mean. <laughs> like, put up the numbers that he put up. Yeah. Supposedly, supposedly, you know, we ain't seen <laughs> them. Right? Just, but um, they, they, the stats don't lie, right? <laughs> so to me, it's between Larry Bird and Shaq. Okay. Um, and I don't know. I still never really made the decision. <laughs> like it's 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 a very very hard decision. That's a hard to make. one, man. And it's 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 like it's the top ten, right? So the next guy is literally just eleven. You know, like 11. he's still, he's right, still there. right there. He's top still 20. right there. Like I, mean, I don't know, bro. It might be Shaq for me that gets knocked out wow. yeah because and let me explain like um i think in terms of winning championships staying on the same team means a lot to me mm -hmm. and like not moving around as much and like kind of ring chasing and going to like places where you feel like you have a better chance to win a ring one of my gripes with lebron and yeah. his rings I was like you got lebron at two I know, but I, I count I count other things for LeBron's greatness, Obviously, like yeah. statistical greatness and longevity and things like that. Mm -hmm. But like that's probably why he'll never go over MJ for me because of the things that I just said. Yeah. And so like Kobe to me, like staying staying in LA and like building from the ground up, like winning the three with Shaq and then like staying and like going through all those years where it was basically just turmoil he requested a trade at one point and it ended up not happening mm. they trade for Pau Gasol they end up winning two more like that means a lot more to me than like Shaq winning three in a row and then like being a diva about the whole thing and going to Miami and winning another one and going and teaming up with like D Wade who was arguably like not better than Kobe yeah. but he was like damn near close that year closest. and like it was it was 
It was like he like the Heat were obviously a better overall team than the Lakers were. So that kind of stuff matters to me. I think I think Larry Bird's greatness, winning three straight MVPs, is a is a that's, that's is a big argument. thing. Is a big argument. Um, staying in Boston all those years and winning. Granted, his team was very good, but that's just the argument for me. That's just my opinion. That's just how I feel about it. I, I, I'll say this: I don't disagree with the two that you leaving off as far as Larry Bird and Shaq. Obviously, my discrepancy, I have Shaq as my third spot because yeah. I believe he is the most dominant player, basketball player of all time. He, like, when that man was on the floor, he was a force to reckon with. And it's just... I don't know if I... I probably agree with that. Like, I would argue LeBron. I would argue LeBron. No, like, would argue from LeBron. all three <laughs> levels, yes, LeBron is the most dominant. But from as the center position and doing things to, for, to a, a, like... I don't know about LeBron team. all three levels in terms of most dominant at all three levels. Yeah, all three levels. LeBron, LeBron is not a – He's the leading scorer of all time, man. He's but a, he's not a, like, great three-point shooter for his career. You know what I mean? Like, that's – But I'm saying all, at shooter. all three levels – He struggled in the mid-range for a very long time. But like, now – A very long time. The man we looking at right now, 38-year-old LeBron James, has top five on every category and. That every three, all three levels about like I'll give it to you. shooting. He can. I'll let you have shooting. it. I would argue Kevin Durant's a better three level scorer than LeBron, but that's just my opinion. I'm sure we're a lot talking of people, top ten guys. I know. <laughs> Katie's twelve, <laughs> Not, thirteen. He close. He right there. Uh, he right don't there. Know, don't man. don't. If discredit we're talking Katie. about the people jumping around teams thing and go, trying to go chase rings, that puts Katie in like. Well, that's why he'll probably never really crack the top well. ten. But you can't discredit Katie. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of KD, honestly. Like, I, I, I respect his game and I respect what he's done, but I'm, I, I wouldn't. I think that's KD a fun little conversation, over. bro. Because the top ten, like the top ten players ever, like ever since it's always it's always been pretty undisputed for me. Like Steph, Steph cracking this is pretty freaking cool, bro. Because I mean, those ten guys were always undisputed for me. It's my top. It was always it was MJ, LeBron, Kobe, Kareem, Magic. Tim Duncan, Bill Russell, Larry Bird, Shaq, and Wilt. Those those were always, always, since I've ever known basketball, the top ten players of all time. Yeah. Since I ever knew anything about the greatness of like former players, that has always been the top ten. So for us to witness Steph, like like he doesn't crack everybody's list, right? And he uh, barely cracks mine, honestly. And like, like for I'm not me, a Steph fan, so for it's me, not, it's yeah. crazier for me to put Steph Curry in my top. My exactly, top exactly. <laughs> so like, it's it's a real thing, and I just think it's so cool. Bro. I think it's so cool. Yeah, that no, we he's get definitely to reinvented the game. And there's like, no, there's been nobody ever in the history that's that's impacted the game the way that he no. has and made other teams play differently. Yeah, like, no. like I said, he changed the game, man. It's, like like the Jordan changed shot. the game, right? Like Jordan changed the game in terms of like making it more global and more popular and and that sort of thing. Like we wouldn't I feel have like the internet has fed that to us. We would, but like we wouldn't, we wouldn't. The, the NBA game. wouldn't be what it is without Jordan and Jordan sneakers and and him. We'll like see once that movie, have you seen the commercial for that movie that came out that's coming out, the Nike the Jordan commercial, like Jordan. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we'll I, I think I we'll, we'll get some more Jordan history, but go ahead, continue. Well, I just, I just, I, I give him his credit because the NBA wouldn't be what it is. David Stern probably deserves a lot of credit for that, like making it a global game and making yeah. it a popular game. It wouldn't be like people like my mom, who might still be in here, like would not really like be too familiar with basketball unless if it wasn't for Michael Jordan. Like, mm -hmm. like he, if you did not care a lick about sports or basketball in general, Michael Jordan made you be like. What is this? Why is everybody talking about See, this but guy? The crazy like, thing for me, it's he wasn't. That wasn't that guy. Like that's LeBron for me. And we it's didn't, like, we I didn't, feel like we our generation. There. We didn't yeah, live it. We didn't. Hundred percent. But I feel like, and now that bad as it sounds, not I'm not gonna say it like that. But the, now the new generations are coming along, but they don't know MJ like that no more. Like, yeah. And I don't really consider him Man, as far MJ, as like, bro there was a guy walking around a gym where there was a bunch of little kids in there talking about when you, when i say mellow who do you think of uh, yeah, and they, they like 70 80 percent of them said Lamelo ball. ball yeah no that sucks that it sucks. seems like you're talking about <laughs> this generation thinking about mj they don't even know yeah, kobe they don't know <laughs> they don't even know kobe it's crazy it's Mello in New York. but um yeah no i uh 
that's all that's all that I have on that. I just think I, I'm very, very grateful to witness something like that and for it to be one of my favorite players and watch it in the fashion that he did it, kinda like do it himself and is carry there any, it into the finish line. Is there any like, player like in the league right now that could potentially work their way into the top ten all time? That's a good question. Luca's probably the only one immediately. Like okay. maybe Giannis if he wins a little bit more. I'd say those are the only two. Yeah. The, yeah I'd say have a realistic shot. Giannis probably has the yeah, best chance the best of chance, anybody yeah. in the league. He's right winning for Milwaukee, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. And he, the way the Milwaukee's looking right now, I wouldn't right. if they won a championship this year. Right? Let the Lakers win another championship, bro. Let's start talking about AD. Yeah. Like I know, I know nobody would really want to hear would, that yeah, right now. Would, yeah, like yeah. just the way that AD has this stigma about him, but that would be a real thing were the Lakers to win another championship because he's an all-time great. Like he was a seventy-five greatest player for a reason. Yeah, you win another championship, you jump up that list very, very fast. Yeah. yeah we'll see. All right, let's go into the All Star stuff since it's about to happen. Um, Almost out of time, five minutes. I'm a little long. Man. I will. What is it even? Is it on TNT? It's got to be right. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. We'll put this in the background. I'm gonna mute it. In the background. Let's see, let's see what's going on. Oh, there's some light. Yeah, we don't need that's, that's, that's too much light. Fresh fade. Christy on a Friday or Saturday, excuse me. <laughs> Days are jumbling together at this point. Yeah, yeah. I'm intrigued to see this All Star weekend. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Who's okay? What even is the skills challenge anymore? Because no clue. They got like three teams. Man. Do you have the lineup? Do you have the so they got Team Antetokounmpo, Team. Let's see if I can find it. Sacramento and team some one of the team. I have the picture right here. Actually. I just tried to do it on the phone. My yeah, team. pull it up because I I'm, I would really like to know. All right, let me see here. What, what did it? What is it? What has it even become? Like, all oh, right. Team Austin Kumbo. Yeah, team Jazz and team Rooks. What in the world? So they're just man. like, <laughs> and the crazy thing, team Austin Kumbo says Thias or what? Thonis, yeah, he ain't even in the league right now. Is he in the team? He's on the bus. Alex isn't in the league. Okay, yeah, so I knew one of them was yeah, in the league. Alex so is not the they league. just sucking, riding the honest though. Yeah, the that's crazy. The there. Jazz, though, just Team, team Jazz. jazz. Just, we're, yeah, like, <laughs> we're in Salt Lake City, so we got to throw I them in there. I guess that's fair. Okay, I forgot about <laughs> that. That's, that's too, fair, bro. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. All right, so we got Jordan Clarkson, Walker Kessler, and John, uh, John Collins. Colin oh, Sexton <laughs> um, for Team Jazz. Then Team Rook, Paulo Bancaro, Jaden Ivey, and Jabari Smith Jr. That's cool. That's cool. Like, yeah, well, I'm I interested mean, to see what the, like, I, I mean. <laughs> who you got? <laughs> probably Team Jazz. I would. Just because they're in Utah, it'll be it'll be hype. I'm going with the hometown heroes. I don't, I don't know, even know what the bro, fuck they're I might doing. Go, like, like, I'm not going with the Antetokounmpo. No, they're going to be out there looking long as hell. Skills challenge. <laughs> Skills challenge no. Out there, Giannis trying to shoot, shoot threes. The, yeah, he's going to try to shoot a three. I don't even know if the Nassis can shoot threes. I think he's too big. His his arms might not go above his shoulders. Boy, this is thick. Um, big humans. I think I'm taking rooks. I'm taking the rooks, bro. I like, I like, I like the skill set of all three of them. I think all three of them are very skilled players. I think uh, Walker Kessler could struggle a little bit in terms of the dribbling. Like, I think all three of those guys will be. Maybe they haven't split up as far as like each player does a certain skill. Like, it's not. Nah, it's Ooh, like maybe I don't know. See, I don't know. It could. Yeah, they could be changed the rules and stuff. I don't know. I'll still go with the rooks. I think they. Have, I think out of if it as a skills challenge, like I think they probably have the most skill out of all three of those teams. Yeah, because right now the way it looks, it looks possibly like it'll be a relay type of thing, because not each one has like a three point shooter, a dribbler, and like a finisher or some shit. Yeah, like that. we we don't we don't know the rules, so that's gonna make this difficult. Yeah, but we know the rules for the other two. So. All right, so we'll go to the three point challenge next. This is honestly probably more exciting than the dunk contest for 100%. me. How in the hell? Did Julius Randall <laughs> sneak his name? Okay, we, we, we we'll say what? who we have here first. So Tyrese Who did he Halliburton. Replace? I right, no, listen, my fault. <laughs> we got Tyrese Halliburton, Tyler Hero, Buddy Hield, Kevin Herter, Damian Lillard, Lori Marketing, Julius Randle, and Jason Tatum. I really Who do you think's winning? I haven't thought about this at all. No? I'm not gonna lie to you. Because this is very hard. Um, I, yeah, I'm going with Jason Tatum. That boy got a burner. 
Give me. Or Dame. Mm, that's interesting. I don't know. This is hard. Yeah. Dame, I was going to say Dame. I saw a tweet that Dame's wearing his Weber State uniform tonight. For the that's cool. Contest. That's cool. Yeah. Give me Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald? He give me is, Buddy Heald. He, the leading percentage-wise in the give me, NBA? Like, give me Buddy Heald. I'm going with Buddy Heald. It's a good pick. I, like I said, I'm going with Jason Tatum just from watching him and even though I hate the Boston Celtics. but I like Kevin Herter. I feel like he, he'll struggle in a competition like this. I think I think Buddy Heald can get hot. I think Dame can get hot. I wouldn't be surprised if Lloyd Martin. Why was, is Julius uh, Randle in this competition? <laughs> I don't know about Lori Markin, and I don't know He's if he can get hot. Hero, man. I don't know if he can get hot like that though. I don't know if Tatum can it's get hot gym, like that though. either. Tatum, Tatum's form like gives me negative questions ago, about, about a three point contest. Like, I think that's the reason Tyrese Halliburton will struggle too because of his form. His form is gonna well, take too much picture. time. He's got both hands on the side of the ball. Have you? Yeah, have you seen his form? Yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. I didn't even know he shot threes like that. I thought he was just like a Kevin Herter's been struggling as of late too, yeah, so it might be in his head. So. I, I think like, Buddy Hill, Dame can get hot. I got questions about everybody else, to be honest. But it's going to be good, bro. It's going to be better than the dunk contest, probably. More I already know who I got in the dunk contest. I'm not even thinking about that. I already know my pick yeah. for that. It's interesting to me that oh, it just shows what Steph Curry has done to his league. Like, the three-point contest is so much more interesting. But, like, it's also, it's also, like discredit to the guys that refuse to do the dunk contest. Shaden Sharp would have been really exciting in this. I don't know. I mean, if we were... Like why, when Steph did the three-point contest? Jaw basically said he's not doing the dunk contest yeah. ever. But like, LeBron ja never did the dunk contest. Zion will probably never do the dunk contest. No. He does, he's done enough, enough dunk contests. Like, Zach Levine like, and Aaron Gordon was probably the greatest dunk contest of all time, and we will probably never see something like that again. Uh, I, I feel like, there are, re- ago, I feel like there are reasons that these guys don't do the dunk contest, and I want to know because it doesn't make sense to me. I feel like that's a lot of pressure, man. Go up there and dunk in front of those many people and have to put really put on a show. Think about it, like, outside of that, from Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon, it's like, we ain't really seen a show and even since like the Blake Griffin when he jumped over that car, like and bro, Dwight Howard, yeah, like we used to have some Nate shows. Robinson, the, like, the creativeness the is just like, not there anymore. It's not. It's really not. So I, I feel like shooting a three pointer and just getting your shit off is easier. Hey man, I got buddy here. <laughs> it's Rod. So yeah, it's Rod. That, that's probably it, man. Like, there's no creativity in this NBA no more. All right, we'll yeah. list off the dunk contest participants. All right, yeah. If you're listening, you probably don't even know who these guys are, but it's okay. (laughs) All right, so we got Trey Murphy III from the Pelicans, Kenyon Martin Jr. from the Rockets, Mac McClung from the 76ers, and... True. How do you say his name? Jericho Sims. Jericho Sims, okay, from the Knicks. All right, now before we start clowning this, I will say this. Let me say this. Let me say this before we start clowning it. I'm clowning the... Dunk contest, not these guys. Go ahead. These guys can jump. Yeah. All these guys are done. Like, Kenny Martin Jr. is a really good dunker. Like, I feel like he's going to come out with something exciting. I have questions about Jericho Sims and Trey Murphy. I think we're going to get a really good show from Kenny Martin Jr. and uh, Mac McClung. Yeah. Mac McClung is my pick to win the to Yeah, win the 100% contest. my pick as well. I'm with you. I think the NBA knew that they had to go get a, a, a dunker. A guy and that he gonna put yeah, on a show. Yeah. Like, they can do some crazy Yeah. Things. And so hopefully, like, actually, like, like, go like, against this Kenny yeah. Martin guy because he's, he's yeah. he can jump. So, I, I am disappointed we're not going to see, see Shaden Sharp. Because I yeah, was, that's what I was going to say. I, I was excited see him, to see I was excited to see Shaden Sharp. I'm not going to lie yeah. to you. What did, why isn't he in it? Is, I think he got hurt. Okay. That's I think he got hurt. Yeah, man. How do you feel about Mac McClung signing that two way contract just for this so they could be in a jersey? I think it's uh, they wave somebody just to sign him. Man. It's a cool gesture, <laughs> nice little gesture. So he didn't have to wear a blue coat. Yeah, you know, crypto dot com thing. I would man, if I'm Michael Clung, I'm still wearing that jersey. I'm like, yeah, I'm for the G League. These niggas don't want me. For I real. would say that. I would do that too. Yeah, yeah like would, y'all want me in the dunk contest, but y'all don't. Y'all want don't me in the mean, league. Yeah, it don't mean the league. Bet. Y'all know what I'm here for, but bet. Yeah, I would do. I'd do it. I would just point. really just a middle finger to the NBA, like. Yeah. This is what you're right, I think this skills contest is about to get underway. Yo, so we're gonna, I'm going to cut off this recording here. So I think this is going to be the end of the podcast. We're going to go ahead and sure, dive yeah. into this watch party. So another successful podcast down. Oh, good one, man. Yeah, man. Um, I enjoyed it. I think we're I think we're sticking to YouTube for now. So yeah. we're not going to talk about the Spotify and all that junk anymore. Oh, but yeah. if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel right now. 
uh, drop a like. It's gonna help us out a lot with the algorithm uh, and helping us out to get other people see this, see our our chat. crazy takes. Yeah, if you guys tune in live with us, obviously. If you want to tune in live next time, we would stream this every. Well, we don't have a day we're, yet. We're gonna we're, get on a Thursday, Friday. Yeah, type we're thing. gonna we're we're figuring it out with our schedules yeah. and stuff here soon. It's so um, we're we're doing it as much as we can. But Twitch.tv slash ShankJe. Uh, if you want to follow, you can get the notification every time we go live. Obviously, if you want to follow me on socials, uh, Shang J on Twitter is probably the best way to find out when I'm going live with that sort of thing. Um, follow me on the gram, JP underscore McGee. Now we're just plugging our Instagram. Gotta get them off, and everything man. Like that, but, gotta um, get the followers. No, we, we really do appreciate you guys. Man. That's where I'm going to keep y'all updated on when we're going live. So We're getting this uh, we're getting this thing off the ground. We're going to keep it moving. Yeah. And... um. Yeah, we appreciate any type of support that we're going to get. So, um, appreciate anybody tuning in live. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Second Unit Podcast. And we'll see you next time. time.